and welcome back to the virtual wedding showcase event brought to you by Bonetti Menswear. Over this week, we'll be bringing you lots of wedding planning advice, expert tips from the best in the wedding industry. So make sure you tune in every night for that. Of course, all the gorgeous menswear you're gonna to see tonight is from Bonetti, and you can find the details of that and of the lovely bridal wear on bonetti.ie. And I'll also be bringing you details of a really exciting competition, We're giving away 1,500 euro worth of groomswear. So stay tuned for the details on that. But we're gonna kick off now with two of my fave experts from the industry, Katie Kavanagh, wedding photographer, and of course, Connor Clear, who is one of our uh, Ireland's best celebrants. <laughs> Hi guys. Hello, how are you? Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Of course, we've known each other for a long, long time, in and out of weddings. Um, and you guys have had lots of experience of all different ends of weddings yourselves. But I'm gonna kick off with Connor. Connor, of course, you may know him from TV3 <laughs> over the years. He's worked in Virgin Media, he's done weather, he's done the lotto, he's done the continuity, he's done the lot. But you're now a celebrant. As I say, in a former life, that is what I used to do. But yeah, I've just found my way into, into this uh, little new part of my life now and it's, it's super and I'm loving it. I mean, it makes absolute sense. You're basically presenting the wedding. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's kind of what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's, yeah, it's a lovely thing to be able to do, yeah. Well, the whole theme of tonight's show is about personalising your wedding, because as you know, brides and grooms, they all want to make the wedding about, about themselves, that it, you know, it demonstrates what they're all about. And I think one of the first and kind of more, more important ways of doing that is to really personalise your celebration. Um, people are kind of moving away a little bit from church weddings and they're going for, you know, different types of celebrations, whatever. So I wanted to talk to you about you know, really kind of personalizing your day, starting off with the celebration. So there's lots of different rituals that you can do within a celebration. Some of them will be familiar with and some of them are a bit out there. Talk to me about some of those. Absolutely. So there is an infinite list of different things that you can add yeah. to, to your ceremony. Um, and I always feel I just try and give it everything I can because I'm very aware of the fact that your ceremony sets the tone for the rest of the day then. And yeah. if you have a good ceremony, it really lifts people for the rest of your celebration. There's and nothing like a good ceremony. When, when a ceremony is a bit of crack, you're like, yes, this is it, great. It does, it really sets it up. Yeah, and like I've been a guest at weddings where maybe the celebrant or, you know, whoever's been conducting the ceremony may not have been, you know, great. And people talk about it for the rest of the day. So I feel that pressure then as, as a celebrant. I'm like, come on, get in your A game here. Uh, but yeah, look, there is an infinite list of, of, of things that you can do. So you can start off, you know, when I sit down with couples and I will talk them through all different options that you have across the day. Um, I start with what you might kind of recognize as the, as the you know, the basics almost. Yeah. The, the type of things that people will almost expect to see at a wedding ceremony. So you're talking about candles, the unity candles. Um, so that's the one where you have the two unity candles and you light the centre candles. And it's a really meaningful, significant thing. And it's, it's, it's one of what we might call the basics. Then you're talking about ring exchange, um, vows, um, and then, you know, you, you string them together then with a couple of readings. And then after that then, you can start to get really creative with what you want to do on your big day. And that's where the fun part can come in. And I always try and say to, to couples when I sit down to, that I hope it's not daunting. It should never be daunting because there is so much choice. Um, so where, where do we start? I mean, really, um, I think one of the most popular things at the moment is the hand fasting. Yes, mm. I love that. Yeah, I do love that. Yeah, a lot of people go in for the hand fasting. Makes for a great photo. It does. And yeah. then, like, <laughs> even the ribbons or whatever the actual tie is that they pick. Absolutely. That's always really personal. That's true as well, yeah, because different colours mean different things. So you can actually choose ribbons based on the meanings of the colours, or you can choose ribbons that are maybe based on the colour scheme of the wedding yeah. as well. Or they might have been your grandmother's ribbons, or, you know, oh, absolutely. fabric torn up from something. I've seen all sorts of lovely stories. It's absolutely, It's a really yeah. nice kind of visual, isn't it, that you're together. I love that. And like that, it is really visual. And I know between now Katie and talking to photographers as well, it, it's visual as well. Yeah, it's a really lovely yeah. moment as well. Yeah. You know, the couple are generally looking at each other going, Whoa. A bit mad we're tied together. You know, yeah. It's like <laughs> I know. And I've got some nice words that go with the moment when you tie the knot and you say, These are the hands of your best friend. Oh. These are the hands that will wipe 
away tears of joy and tears of sadness. Ah, stop now, you're gonna make me cry. Ah, you know I'm sad. in these hands <laughs> that you hold the fate of your union. And that's when you go, cue, cry, <laughs> and the whole, the whole all the guests go, oh my God. <laughs> this is got so tears beautiful. in eyes already. <laughs> <laughs> so that's always a really popular one. Plus, the other thing with that is you can include guests and family members as well. They can come up and add ribbons as well. Okay. Caveat, it might get a little bit chaotic the more you add in, <laughs> but the option is there. Adds for great photos. This that's is it. Yeah, you love a bit of chaos. Chaos. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. What have we got after that? Then can another. Can you the sand thing still? Now, yes. Sand is something that always comes up in conversations. Okay. Um, and yeah, it can work really well. My two cents on it, and, I, and, I've, and I've done it at ceremonies before and, and it works really well. And again, I, I won't bore you with more script, but I've got some really nice things <laughs> to say as the sand has, has been mixed. It works really well. But I kind of find, unless it's relevant to you, unless you, you're from Core Town or unless you're from Rio and you're mixing uh, the sand. Actual sand, yeah, okay. If it doesn't mean anything to you, there's something a little bit gimmicky about okay, it sometimes agreed. as well. I so, always think, where do they put it? Yeah, do you keep it? You keep it, yeah, you keep yeah. it. Yeah, yeah and, and you can get things on Etsy as well that you can, little personalised jars okay. with designs but on it. But is it just names. sitting on your mantelpiece then? You're like, well, maybe I suppose if you're yeah. into it, you're looking at it going, oh, that's Particularly really if it's like that in sand does have some meaning, like yeah. you say. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I just yeah. find and then the wine the ceremony, the this interests me a lot. There's some sort of wine ceremony where you both mix oh, yeah. wine and you drink it or something. No. Well, no, I'll tell maybe you what the wine ceremony is. Maybe drink the wine. Is. Well, the good, <laughs> the good thing about the wine ceremony Did I just is, make this up? <laughs> <laughs> um, you can drink it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look, it's there to be enjoyed. Um, the, the, the wine ceremony is a lovely one and I like including it in ceremonies when, when couples go for it. It's basically, it's not a million miles from a time capsule um, and again it's another Etsy thing where you can get boxes uh, done up with you know personalized names and, and dates. You, you seal the box this you one. Seal Sorry, the yes, box. This is something different. Okay, yeah. yeah so what you do Say again. <laughs> so you don't drink the wine. <laughs> Sitting up the top. Well, happily, no, there is one where there's two mixing and a drinking. But anyway, so I love this one too. I'm yet to do that wedding. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be looking forward to that one. But um, uh, no, so yeah, so you put the, the wine in, and what I would suggest to, to couples is you write love letters to each other, and they go into the box as well, and you seal the box. Now, look, you after that, then you set the parameters of when you want to open the box yeah. on your fifth anniversary or tenth anniversary. I've had a couple of couples who will open it uh, on their first row and they sit down. That's good. Yeah, yeah. it's really beautiful. When you need it most. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Video. yeah. So, yeah, so you sit down, you drink the wine, and you read the love letters to each other. I it's, absolutely it's a love really that. Nice, absolutely. It's a nice and are people element. still writing their own vows? Or are they on the internet being like, what I find with people, I always offer with couples. What I say with couples is there's three main ways of doing your vows there's the repeat vows, where I say, do you, do do you this, Connor, do you take Laura, you know, <laughs> uh, and you go, I do. Uh, there's the other one, repeat after me. I, Connor, take you, Laura, and they repeat. Or there's the write your own vows. Okay. And I will always say, if you want to write your own vows, I'm here to help you go through them. But I'm kind of driving them to get it done and have it done because there's nothing worse than waking up in the morning of your wedding and going, Oh my God, I haven't written my vows. I wrote mine the morning of my wedding. You did not. Did you? Yeah, I did. Did. So you wrote your own vows? Yeah. Um, I had like notes on my phone and stuff, things that would pop into my head over the, the course of like the wedding plan. Like we were together 11 years before we got married, so we knew full well he was the right fella and all that. <laughs> you didn't rush into it? No, <laughs> not at all. But the morning of then I had like the notes and someone I'd read somewhere in my years of giving wedding planning advice to actually do it the morning of because you've all the emotion and you'll be more honest. So okay. that's why I did it. Also, I'm really bad at like, I put everything on the long finger and then the morning of the wedding, I had like a nice book and I was like writing the vows in it and stuff. That's quite a nice ritual on the morning though as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, like, but then you see people, the other side, they've so much to do the morning of. Yeah. They're especially grooms, they've like stuff that they're supposed to be doing. They're trying to write a speech, they're trying to write mm. vows and they just end up writing like random stuff that they've Googled. That is true. Yeah. That How is far true. in advance did Darren write his? He had his well ready to go. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> I know Katie's husband. Like, Very organised. He had it and his were brilliant. Mine were a bit more funny. Oh, but that's good too. Because he is funny and I thought his would be funny. I'm not the funny one, he is. And then his were really serious and he had everybody crying and I had everyone laughing, which is usually the other way around. 
But isn't it nice that you fell into that natural role reversal then yeah. on the day and, and switched the tables? That's yeah. great. That's really nice. I also think it is really nice for people who maybe aren't that confident that it's still absolutely fine to be led during the ceremony. Maybe you're a bit nervous and maybe you just need you to say, do you do this? I do. Do you? I do. Yeah. Just, they're just trying to get to the, the wine. <laughs> I'm still on the wine. Sorry, can we open that wine box? <laughs> um, yeah, like I love hearing stories like that. The fact that you were able to to do that, like that's, and that's fab. And when, when you do write your own vows like that, it is a lovely moment in the ceremony. It's really, really nice. Yeah. And it's another little kind of, um, what's the word? It's just like this emotional, punctuation for the guests yeah. Yeah. Uh, that they go oh my god this is really lovely um so when it works it works really well but that's not always the case um and i would say to to, to couples when i meet them it's you know take the stress off it um, yeah if, if it's not your thing then you don't have thing. to do it yeah absolutely yeah that's definitely the case and people get their families involved in the ceremonies a bit as well now like obviously with speeches and the whole thing, but... Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And like that as well, this is another kind of infinite list of different things that you can yeah. do. Yeah, you get people up to do readings. Um, and, and, and again, I'm going to use that word caveat again. There's, I've, I've witnessed guests getting really stressed out because they just get up and do a reading, you know. So what I would say is, you know, plan ahead, talk to the person that you're going to ask. Yeah. And just make sure they're happy with it. Yeah. And because there are other ways then of, of involving your guests as well. We talked about the ribbons. Uh, sure. And they can do fasting. something a little bit less yeah. public speaking. -y. They can yeah. turn on the music. They can turn on the music. They can hold your bag. They can do a thing. Yeah. But they yeah. Can, absolutely. There's a million things to be done on the day. Yeah. Playing, the, playing the music is a big one oh, uh, yeah. as well because celebrants usually we, we hate having to because <laughs> we're play. like i'm not a dj <laughs> we're re yeah we're reading the script and we're we're, we're performing this ceremony and um, so i always try and and really respectfully and nicely say have you nominated somebody to press play in the music if if it's going to come from a uh, from uh, from a device there's another way that i really like to include guests as well and when it works it works really well is the ring warming Oh, I love this. Yeah. Oh, when it works, it's just gorgeous. Um, and it's, you, you would pass the rings around the congregation during a piece of music and they hold them in their hands for a few moments and they imbue the rings with their best wishes and their, their thoughts and hopes and dreams for you. And it's really nice. Again, if, if, if you're going to play music off a device, I think people kind of know that and they tend to start chatting during it then. True, and true, it kind of, yeah. it can break the flow of the ceremony but if you've got a live musician people are subconsciously more respectful of that sure, and, yeah. and they'll they've got like a focal point as well exactly yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly so you don't break the flow um so it is something to think about but yeah the so. ring warming is great for photos as well because you do get like the older relations holding onto the rings and really kind of they might buying say a into prayer it. or something yeah and they do take a moment and then you get the pals and they're like mm, you know <laughs> Like, do you know, there's all these different moments going on around the ceremony. It's a good way of keeping people engaged, isn't it? To, you know, it's a bit of audience participation and I know there's lots of different ways you can do that. People play games and all sorts now in their ceremonies, don't they just yeah, do absolutely. whatever you can? Yeah, absolutely. I just think it's a, it's, a, it's a nice way of doing it. But mm -hmm. look, I mean, it's, it's an endless list of different things you can do. Like, absolutely. Well, yeah. on that, like because there is so many things you can do. And I know a lot of couples will say to me they didn't know where to start. Like, is there is there a template? of, you know, here are the key things you need to hit and you can fill it in. Do you help them with that? Where do you start? So, so yes and no, I absolutely, of course I help them uh, with it. I, every ceremony that I would do with a couple is built with them. So I don't necessarily come to them with a template okay. per se. Obviously I've got an idea of a, of a shape in mind that I will sit down and talk them through it. Um, but ultimately the, the ceremony that I build with a couple will be based on what they want okay. on, on the day. So, so you start so, from the chat with them and build from there? Say again? So you start from having a chat with them and you kind of build it from there? Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so in a pre-COVID world, I, I would always go and meet them and we go and grab a coffee and we sit down and I get to know them. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I could probably then very quickly then gauge that, yeah, I know they, these will probably go for this or whatever like that. So now that's obviously moved online and we do like little video sure, consultations. Course, yeah. But but yeah, so, so it's it's not quite a template, um, but I would absolutely sit down and, and, and talk them through all yeah. the different elements and, and give them everything. And I always try and, I have to kind of tread carefully because I don't want to overwhelm them 
with so much choice because there is so much choice, you know. Um, so, so yeah, so uh, so. It's well, there's nothing worse than someone telling you, "Oh, you can do whatever you want," and giving you no guidance. Yeah, what does you're that like, mean? What does I don't mean? know what I want. These are questions that before. I never knew I had to answer. Mm -hmm. That's what we found when we were planning our wedding. Like I can talk as an expert in weddings from shooting weddings, but when it comes to planning your own wedding, you're like, like I didn't know I had to answer these questions. Like it's your job. You know this. So there is a certain amount of yeah, yeah. Tell me this, guys. How how long is the perfect wedding ceremony in minutes? Because they can be too long as well. Let's face it. Okay, so I, I have a time in mind. Yeah, as, so as a I. photographer, would it vary for a photographer? I would say around forty minutes. That's yeah. what I was kind of thinking. Yeah. I would be a fraction less. 30. I would say max 30. And it's funny, I've sat down with couples and they've kind of gone at either end. I've, I've had couples be like, can we do it in 10 minutes? Well, I would always assume 40 minutes when I'm timelining because I would allow five or 10 minutes for the bride being late. Yeah. And then if it's a half an hour, you're at 40 minutes then. Yeah. So I suppose I Do you need I it to be a certain length so you can hit the certain markers that you no. need to shoot? No, no. you're good, okay. I don't. You're never panicking that it's finished before you've got what you need. No, there'll <laughs> always be like walking in, greeting each other at the top, whatever their unity ceremony is, first kiss, back down the aisle. That's kind of all you're looking for really. And then okay. anything else that happens throughout it, it's just is a bonus. You photograph. Yeah. Okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah. yeah. And t tell me this, nervous couples, obviously a lot of people who are less talkative than us, they have to stand up in front of a whole lot of people and say a whole lot of really important things. And I know some people are really, really terrified about it. So like, what are both of you, from both of your perspectives, how do you get past that as a nervous uh, couple, bride or groom? Well, <laughs> well I feel this. Yeah, you feel this one. <laughs> I feel this one. I'm like, you'll be grand, I'll see you at the top of the round. bye. <laughs> I know, yeah. Um, well, it's funny because I'm, always, I'm, I'm at the top with the groom and the poor lads are always, invariably, they are nervous wrecks. Okay. Um, so I will say I usually do carry some little um, rescue remedy. Oh, lovely. That I okay, kind of very nice. Like, Whereas I always egg them on. Really? Because I want oh. the tears. I want the reaction. <laughs> I want, like, I want the nerves. I like, I try not to interfere too much. So like, I'd be sound and be like, listen, it's grand. She's here. You know. Yeah, yeah. Or your partner is here. It's fine. Like, you're just gonna get married. Ignore everybody else. But then I'd be like, when the door is open, I'd be like. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's... Do you know what's really interesting? You've you've um, just mentioned that. What's really funny is when I'm putting the ceremony together, when I'm writing the ceremony, I will always um, get the bride to do her vows and everything for anything she has to say first, and then do the guy, because if the guy goes first, she's in tears. She will be in floods of tears. Now, oh, for you, good. for a photograph that might be a really nice dramatic moment that I'm putting the yeah. brakes on. But I'm thinking about the flow, the, you know, yeah. the theatrical flow of what we're doing. And I'm like, no, 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 no. This that's is funny gonna... now, the Battle of the Vendors. Yeah, yeah. that's interesting. And, and the, the makeup artist is on team yeah. Connor here in this one, like so. <laughs> yeah, whereas I'm like, come on, give me them tears. <laughs> but of course, this is obviously, you know, presuming it's a, it's a bride and a groom, like, and what started probably, you know, maybe inspired by same-sex weddings is couples walking in together. Yeah. And a lot of, you know, uh, brides and grooms, if, it's, if that's the way the couple is, do that now as well. They'll both walk in together. Yeah, we We've did seen that. People walk in. You walked in together? Yeah. See, I've, I've been to maybe three weddings now that they did that. I love no, that. No, we walked in together. Was and was that back. a, I'm too nervous to do a thing or no. you just didn't want the traditional? I didn't want to put my dad, my dad is like, didn't do a speech, didn't want to yeah. any limelight on him. And then I was like, well, I'm not walking in on my own because we'd done a first look. We'd done all our family photos beforehand. Everything was done. So we were hitting the ground running party time. Here we go. Yeah. So we walked in the door and we had like music playing over a speaker thing. I didn't hear any of the music because people were just whooping and hollering and like, it was oh, great crap. I love that. It, again, it sets the tone. Yeah. Like if you see a couple walking in together, you're like, ah, like this is a little less formal than like dad walking the yeah. bride down the aisle yeah, or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, you do, see, I see it a lot more. I don't know if it's because I did it and I talk about it. Yeah. The people go, oh, that's actually a really I've good idea. I've seen it loads and it's always gone down an absolute treat. Yeah. And uh, you know, people walking in with both of their parents, I think oh. it's lovely, that yeah. kills me. Yeah. Um, my friend Ellen walked down the aisle with her son. He actually, he took off his buttonhole because he wanted a bouquet like oh, Mammy. Oh my God. Well, there's a video of that and you can just hear me audibly falling <laughs> in. It's <laughs> so cute. Um, but I think that's kind of the way with weddings now in general, isn't it? Over the last few years, really anything goes and you can yeah. personalize them and make them completely, which is what we're here to talk about. Yeah. Which is perfect, is it. isn't it? This is it. Um, tell me this though. 
Obviously, weddings have changed a lot in the last year and potentially maybe they'll change forever based on what's happened this year. You know, um, are people suddenly realising actually I don't need 200 people, the whole parish. Do you guys think that weddings, people are going to start thinking, actually, no, I think I'll just invite 25 of my nearest and dearest. Or is everyone so gagging for a party that they're going to invite like everyone they know? So I think it's 50-50. I think people that maybe would have been pressured into the bigger weddings are now going, yes, I can have 25. I'm not going to upset the neighbours. And then the people who want the party are just waiting for the party. Like they're just okay. kicking that can down the road. Like I would kick the can down the road. I'd be like, I want 150 people. I want to have a big party. I'm just going to wait. Yeah. And then like I'm still doing the smaller weddings, the six, the 25 at Christmas. And they're happy out. They're like, yeah, this is great. I don't have to invite the neighbours. So it gives people that out if they're so inclined, but yeah. if they're not, then they're waiting and they're, they're cancelling. Yeah. Okay. Postponing, Laura. Postponing, sorry. None I of us cancelled cancel. weddings yeah. now. I, I've noticed now a, a lot of my bookings for 2020 and 2021 have been postponements as opposed to cancellations, yeah. okay. which tells me that people are still holding out for the big party. For the big party, But yeah. now I've had a couple of smaller ceremonies of, of 10 and 12 people, and they are so beautiful. Yeah. Because they're so intimate. Um, and I think this is going to be another kind of, you know, a seismic event, uh, a, 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 seismic, a seismic shift, I think, that's going to change the pattern. But it's going to break that pattern b between people, b between giving people the opportunity to actually say, uh, yeah, I want to do a small wedding. Yeah, Whereas, it makes that a far more kind of acceptable path now if, if you're so inclined. Yeah, absolutely. Because I think it was it was probably trickier to, to it was probably like walking on eggshells with, with, oh, with yeah. family and... You're not invited. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you're not invited. Whereas now <laughs> there's the get out of jail free card, you know, it's like now we're having a small wedding. Yeah, I've um, had a lot of couples, especially over Christmas, the ones that went ahead with the 25 were like, it's, the freedom is brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Um, not having to invite all those people that maybe it's a lot of stress taken off I'd say in many yeah. for many ways and in many areas of your family yeah like life I had one everything. particular couple that were like yeah we had they had booked like the big wedding and then they postponed till this year yeah and then they were like actually do you know what we just go ahead at Christmas 25 and they did and they had the time of their lives they had like a restaurant wedding it was beautiful mm -hmm. and they are delighted so again it's more about doing what you want rather yeah. than like I've always said just do whatever you want People mm -hmm. are like, mm, that's easier said than done. So now it gives them the freedom to kind of go. Yeah, yeah. the excuse. I'm just going to do whatever I want. But I've heard a hundred times, if I've heard it once from brides and grooms, um, that, you know, when people have a registry office wedding, maybe a few days before their wedding, for whatever reason, uh, if they're going abroad or if they're having a celebrant at the, at the venue, that they enjoyed that day nearly as much, if not more, yeah. than the big day, because it is so intimate and they just had their family with them and maybe they went for lunch and, just had a lovely day with their nearest and dearest and now for some people that is the wedding now yeah. you know but if you can if you can do both then why wouldn't you, you absolutely, know? absolutely. Yeah. i'm like drag this out <laughs> absolutely well that I, I find that's what a lot of my couples will do mm -hmm. they'll do the registry office and go off and have a family dinner but they'll time that within a few days of the ceremony yeah. that they'll do with me and it almost prolongs then exactly. the, the sense of celebration you know a wedding week a wedding week exactly yeah, we yeah. why not <laughs> yeah <laughs> so katie yeah let's talk photography here so choosing your wedding photography now you know i feel really passionate about this as well i think it's one of the really most important parts because after the fact you have your lovely marriage hopefully and that th that's all you have left is yeah. this you know these beautiful memories so i'm always encouraging people to just as much as you can to push the boat out with the wedding photographer. There's so many different styles though, so many different approaches to it. Talk to me about your style and how it differs from, say, the traditional wedding photography from years gone by. So yeah, I suppose mine is a lot more informal. Yeah. Like it's warts and all to a certain extent. Um, I understand that you want, you want beautiful photos of you in your outfits with your friends, but also it's not the staged, you know, stand here, look at me, smile for an yeah. hour and a half. It's okay, we'll have 10 minutes where we go off here and we will have a bit of crack. You'll take a break out from whatever's going on on the day and you'll just kind of go, geez, isn't that mad what we just did? We just got married. You know, you'll have a little chat and I will document that and then you'll go back to your party and have a great time. So it is very, mine is very much about the fun and the stories that are going on on the day rather than like a shot list of things that I need to get pictures of. So even when you're asked about the ceremony, yeah, like you'll get the first kiss, but sometimes the first kiss is just a, and you might miss it because they're not that, 
those people. Yeah. So you're just kind of trying to um, give them back something that's more them than rather a prescribed set of yeah. photographs that they need to you're get. You're showing them images of what happened. Yeah. Rather than staging images. Yeah, like if there's somebody crabby at the wedding who probably doesn't want to be there or is a bit more like annoyed about something, you won't show them that, but you'll show them like all their friends and their family having a really lovely time together. And a lot of the photos won't even feature the bride and groom or the bride and bride or the groom and groom. It'll yeah. just be whatever the stories are that are happening that I think are interesting on the day. Um, and I suppose that's why people come to me. Um, a lot of people say, oh, we love that like, the guests always look like they're having a lovely time and that it's not all about us because that's not the people I photograph. They're not those people. They're not like, oh, it's all me, me, me. Well, you don't want 200 photographs of yourself standing there at a bouquet. Do you, I mean, yeah, like, yeah. I want to see my wedding day. Yeah, even from my own wedding, I think we printed maybe 10 photographs. Yeah. Two of them are of me and Darren and the rest are like family or like friends having a good time. And then the album is just like people having a great time. So. And I would bet, I think when people go back and look over their photographs, I'd put money on the fact that the ones that they really look at and go, oh, that's a, that's a, are the natural moments that they probably didn't even realize they were being photographed. Yeah. Yeah, like I do this thing, at the end of the year, I'll ask my couples to pick out their favorite photo from the wedding. And then a couple of years later, I'll go back and ask them again. Like, right. has it changed? And invariably it has changed. Like the, if it's like the year of their wedding, they'll probably pick like one of them having a great time. But then a few years will have passed and they'd be like, oh, it's really hard to pick. I really like this one of my mom doing this. And I really like this one of my auntie doing this. Do you know? Yeah. So like your opinion to your photos changes the more, the further away from your wedding you That's get, I think. Yeah. And the things that happen yeah. afterwards. So. And that whole old school thing of spending an hour and a half with the wedding party lined up, getting your photograph. I've, I was a bridesmaid at one of those weddings and it's, Awful. Everyone's in a bad mood by the end of it. It's just terrible. It's I'm like, what? 20 what photographs are you doing in the same background. Oh my God. Those days are gone, mostly thankfully. Yeah. But I think a lot of people are, they're, they're so afraid of that, that when a wedding photographer says to them, and I'm going to afternoon, I'll take you away for a few minutes, they're like, no, 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 no. I don't yeah. want to miss any of my day. It flies, everyone says it goes so fast. But invariably after the day, they'll say that that was their favorite time because yeah. they got out of breath and they stood in a cornfield, another photograph taken, and they laughed with each other and went, that was mad. See what we just did there? It's crazy. Everyone's here. And then they're so excited to get back into the thick yeah. of it and everything. So many brides and grooms tell me, like when you say, what was your, like the magic moment of the day? And they'll say, walking across the car park with my photographer laughing on our way to, like there was a funny looking car that we got our photograph taken, yeah, whatever we it didn't is, know you know? what we were doing, but we were just having a great yeah. time. Yeah. So get a photographer, that's a bit of crack as well. I'm just saying. Yeah, that's, well, that's, that's very tip. important. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you have to have a bit of crack. Um, yeah, like the hour and a half thing is gone, like you're saying. Like there is a slight formula to it. I know you're saying you don't have a template, but like people come to me and they're like, what, how does how is the day going to go? And I'm yeah, like, Ted, talk to us about the timeline. Yeah, so like in normal wedding times, you have your ceremony, you do your receiving line. That's where you meet everybody at the end of the aisle. Yeah. And they all say how wonderful Of course, a lot of people opt out of that now because they think it's their idea of hell. Yeah, a lot do, of people don't fine. like it and they're just like, yes, COVID means they don't have to do it. And I think what will happen <laughs> is they won't do that going forward. Like if you have a big wedding, that's 40 minutes where you're standing there greeting people. It's a work like it can go, it can, it can. And your makeup can suffer, let's say. Yeah, now it is, again, it's a good spot for photos. Like you do get, oh, no. like the pals coming down the aisle, go, ah, look at you, yeah, you're right, you're right. <laughs> but it is an awful lot of, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you go around to do it again anyway. But yeah, after that, I would say, launch into family photos straight away, keep them short, immediate family only. You'll get all the pictures of your aunts and uncles. They organically happen. Like yeah. the girls that you went to school with, the fellas you play GA with to be really generic here. You know, they'll all organically happen. Those people hang out together on wedding days anyway. Sure. And you'll get them on your phone. You don't want them, really. Like, they go around a WhatsApp chat and that's it. Exactly, yeah. So, yeah, I would say 15 minutes for family photos max. Try and keep it. Because, like, anybody who's been part of a wedding is like, oh my God, I was just standing there like, and my <laughs> face hurt. I just wanted a drink. Then 15 minutes for bridal party just lash into them and that's just you hanging out with your mates um, just like you know having a drink having a chat walk up there walk back you know you're catching them naturally chatting yeah just have like as much movement as possible and videographers thank you for that as well because they're moving and they have something to shoot yeah they're not just standing around going okay I got this mm -hmm. so and then you'll move into couples pictures which will take about 20 minutes 25 minutes depending that's fine yeah like 
when you say that, people are like, oh my God, 20 minutes. I'm like, you're not standing there for 20 minutes no. like this with your bouquet and looking at you're each other. You're heading to somewhere that's yeah, nice. Yeah, you go off somewhere a little bit further away from the, the reception. And it is, it's that time where you go, oh my God, what do we just do? Like, yeah. What, this is bananas. This is mad. So it's, I'm not a stand there, look at me. I'm a, here, the light is nice over there. Go over there and have a chat. And if you are a bit awkward, I'll kind of give a prompt. I'll be like, okay, why don't you just talk about you know, the day you first met, your first date, or why don't you tell each other why you fell in love with each other? And then you get those really real kind of reactions. Some of them will go, I'm not doing that. And then they'll start laughing. And that's a natural laugh. That's I haven't need. gone, okay, laugh. Because <laughs> that doesn't work. Do you know yourself, if someone tells you to laugh, you're tell like- Tell me a joke. Yeah, I know. Do you know, you literally make that face. Mm -hmm. So, and then it's back to the party. My MO was to get you back to the party as quick as possible. Yeah. And I just and think, I think it's isn't really it important, important to kind of, when you're, as a, a, a couple planning your day, you might say, okay, our, our venue or our ceremony is at this time and we've booked the hotel for this time. So you might sit down and do a minute by minute plan of the day, but it is important to talk to your wedding photographer about that, isn't it? Yes. And the time of year changes it a bit for yeah, life. Yeah, so like whenever anyone asks me about a timeline for a wedding day, I start at dinner. Dinner is invariably half five, six o'clock. They'll ring the bell. So you start at the ring the bell time and you work back. Yeah. So in a summer wedding, that's grand. You have the evening time. It's bright until 10, 11 o'clock, it's okay. fine. But in a winter wedding, if you have your ceremony at three o'clock, you've no time afterwards for photos and drinks reception. Yeah. And as much as you say, we're not gonna spend ages getting photos, it's still like 40 minutes to an hour where you're gonna be getting photos. Mm -hmm. And if it's in the dark, it's a lot harder and it's not as much fun. And they're not gonna be as good. No, and well, they will be, but they won't be what you're used to seeing. Um, and you'll miss the drinks reception. Like, oh, no. Yeah, as somebody who always misses the drinks reception, whether it be being a photographer or being a bridesmaid, I'm like, no, drinks reception is so important. So for a winter wedding, I was always encourage people to do the photos before the ceremony. Yeah. Because why wouldn't you? Absolutely. The drinks reception is the best I love bit. a first look. Yeah. Um, and how long does it take to get your wedding photographs back? People always ask us this. I say six to eight weeks. That's not bad. Some people are longer. Some people say 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. It depends really on when you're getting married. If you're getting married in the middle of the summer, be really sound to your photographer and just give them a bit of leeway because they're probably shooting three weddings the week of your wedding. You're not the only one on the books. Um, like they could have shot 12 weddings in a month and they're trying to get them out. So it varies. I yeah. say six to eight weeks. Um, and so you mentioned earlier that you've been shooting small weddings even all along through this, um, you know, like. It's, it's the one thing that you need, no matter what size your wedding is, you need a photographer. Yeah. Has it still felt as special? It's like reassure people if they're going into a small wedding, yeah, is it still like, lovely? Yeah, it has. Like Connor was saying, the ceremony is beautiful. It's yeah. like, ceremony is almost a separate entity in some respects in that like, it's this is the reason why you're here. You're here to get married. I remember you saying to me in the run up to my wedding, there's loads of stuff going on. I was like, oh my God, I'm really stressed. And you were like, do you have someone to marry? Do you have something to wear? And do you have somewhere to do it? And I was like, so wise. You're so wise. <laughs> and I say this to people all the time. I'm like, listen, if you have those things, you know, it's going to be beautiful. People have all these perceptions of what a wedding is, mm -hmm. but like that ceremony with like six of your guests, or six of your family and friends. It's beautiful. It's, it's, it's always it's people's favourite part after the fact as well, you know, all those special moments. It's never, they never talk about the big things that they spent all the money on. It's no. always just the moments, isn't it? Yeah, so they are, they're, they're gorgeous. Like I've done ones during the restrictions where they were allowed of 25 or 50 people and they only had six people or they only had five people. And they were just gorgeous. They took that out. Like, as a couple, you don't know any different. You've been to loads of weddings, but you haven't been married before. So you only have your own wedding as a reference. Yeah, of course, yeah. So whatever way, like a wedding is a feeling as well. Like you're standing there and you're like, oh, this is, this is great. Yeah. This is their magic, aren't think they? I always try and make a point of saying at those small weddings that, you know, it's just us. So let's just shut out, shut out the outside world and yeah. it is just us. Oh, in he's this good. Special he? <laughs> little moment. No, but uh, but it is a yeah. be, 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 because it's such a small group. It makes it that much more intimate, and it, it is it is really yeah. beautiful. And plus, then once you're done with the ceremony, like you say, once you get to the dinner and the party, then you don't have 200 guests that you need to yeah. go around and shake hands with. Yeah, that's it's true. It's just your nearest and dearest it cuts there. Because a lot of the work, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love and that. it generally gives me more time for photos. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like that kind of portrait part of us. Less individual people it's to see, I guess, yeah. yeah it okay, is but that's Okay, but that'll be really reassuring for people to hear. Yeah. Um, you can still be excited, it's still your big day. Absolutely. Yeah, that's no it. Like some people, people were there. saying, oh, do I, you know, they may have bought like their outfits based on having the big wedding. And they're like, oh, uh, this dress is like, it's 
it's not really so a small wedding dress. Small, yeah. And okay. I'm like, wear the dress. Yeah. Like, wear the suit, wear whatever you want to wear. It's if your not wedding now, day. When. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, it is, it's not the same, but it's not any less. Absolutely than not. Another, like the bigger weddings. So speaking of suits, I'm going to have a little chat about this competition now. So if you're watching, please do share the video like it and make sure that you're that you like Bonetti on Facebook and tag three of your friends and you could win 1500 euro worth of seats from Bonetti. Not bad, eh? That's pretty good. Oh, hello. I mean, that would go a long <laughs> way too. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Um, that's all you have to do. So and we'll pick a winner at the end of the showcase um, and it could be you. So three friends, like and share and make sure that you're that you are following Bonetti on Facebook. I actually have a few um, qu uh, questions that have come in before the night for you guys. I'm sure you get inundated with questions usually, but obviously now that things are a bit all up in the air, you're probably fielding questions left, left right and centre. So Katie, I'm going to go to you. You said to me earlier that a lot of the questions that come, people come to you about are, are about the logistics of the day. Yeah. Have those, has, has that changed much? If you are going from, if you planned your day for 150 people right, yeah. and now suddenly there's a lot less people there, has the structure of your day completely changed as well? The structure hasn't changed, it's just a lot more relaxed. Like, it's like any event. Yeah. The less people you have, the easier it is to organise. Mm -hmm. So you're not trying to hoard 150 people into a dinner hall. You've got 15 people and they just need to walk over there. Ah, okay. So, you know, so yeah, because that dinner bell, you need half an hour to half people, an hour. really. Yeah, the venue will always say, <laughs> yeah, but the venue will always say a half an hour. And even now they're saying a half an hour, yeah. but it's not. Because like, people are desperate. We're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I'll just get another pint. Another drink. Yeah. yeah, it's where the bar wasn't in the room. Like. No, our closing times are suggestions here, really, aren't they? Yeah. Rather than <laughs> but do you find since we've moved into the business of, of weddings that now when you're a guest that you're that bit more kind of, oh, I better go. We should go. go. I, I, right. I, no, I know. Because we, <laughs> we need to keep this day moving. There's a photographer there. We need to go. We need to. That's wow. so interesting. So you're, you're on the job. You're like, hold on. What's going on here? But I also know that nothing's going to happen for a half an hour. So I'm ah, going to go okay. sit in that reception room for a half an hour That's sweating. True. That's true. So I'm always the last one I'll be looking at you going, Katie, is this real? No, okay, we're no, fine. We're all in a half an hour. Venues, <laughs> any venues watching will kill me. They'll be like, shut up, Katie. <laughs> Um, but I suppose it gives the couple again, that's a great time for like if there's a sunset around that time, we would nip off. So we'd always take the couple out of the equation because that moves the guests on. The guests take their cue from the bride and groom or the groom and groom or the bride and bride. Golden air shots, oh. my absolute favourite. Yeah. If you, uh, you know, you probably feel like you're done at that point. You may feel like you're done at that point. But if your photographer does say the light's beautiful, we'll just nip outside. Nip yeah, outside. always trust your photographer when they say the light is beautiful. Yeah. Um, yeah, we did it before ours. I was half cut and it was great crack. <laughs> Well, it was good crack though. You're just well, like, otherwise you you're just bring sitting an there. Glass with you when you're going to get your photos. Yeah, I remember and Neve and Hortan just like, here, take that with you. Go on, off you go. She's great. She is great. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just like, it's a lot more relaxed and that you're okay. not trying to move 150 people from a ceremony to a drinks reception mm -hmm. to a dinner. It's, it, yeah, it flows it's a lot easier. Yeah. Speaking of it being relaxed, is it still a thing that a couple would give you a shot list? We want this shot, that shot, that shot. I discourage them and a lot of photographers do because yeah. you hire somebody based on what you've seen on their website. By giving them a shot list, you're kind of limiting them. That's true. Like if I'm going off here looking for this picture, I'm not seeing what's going on over here. Absolutely, like yeah. I will get the picture of your bouquet and your jewellery mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. So you don't need to give me a list for that. Yeah. But if there is somebody that's important, so say you have like, a, pop, a big one is like godmothers or godfathers. I sure, because you wouldn't necessarily I wouldn't know, know who they are. Like yeah, sometimes not people the give you their name and I'm like, I don't know who she is. Yeah, You're sure going to have to tell me. That. So if you tell me your godmother was actually really important, is actually really important to you and you'd love a formal picture of the two of you, 100% give me that. Yeah. But don't give me a list of, I saw this thing on Etsy and I saw this thing on Pinterest because no, no, no. I'm not your photographer. You know, go, just trust your photographer. And I think that's probably an important um, kind of message for all your vendors. You know, pick them because you trust them and you know they're going to do a brilliant job. Yeah. Don't book them unless you know that. And if you know that, then just let them. Yeah, like I get a lot of planners yeah. in that like, they're people who love to plan. But I remember talk again with Eve in Hortown, she was like the most organized brides are the ones who have the most crack on their day because they have done their research, they know their vendors and they trust them. So they're just, once the morning comes, they're like, well, everybody has, everyone knows where they are. Everyone knows what's supposed to happen. I completely trust them. That's the ideal way to be, isn't it? On the morning yeah. of your wedding. You, you stop planning the day, the day before your wedding, stop planning. You're yeah, not planning just anymore. Stop. It's when you arrive it at the venue, just stop. Yeah. Hand it all over. Cause there's nothing you can do. Mm -hmm. 
like. And it will. I mean, the weddings are a machine. Like, if you don't open your mouth for the day, it'll happen. It'll all happen the way We've it's done happened. this hundreds of times. Yeah. We know exactly what we're doing. Yeah, you don't have to be kind of like, and, what's, and where is this person? Where is such and such? I remember yeah. um, on the day of my wedding being like, where is Dave, the photographer? And I was like, what is going on that is more crack than what I'm doing now? <laughs> like, what? Yeah. I wanted to go find him because I knew that he was, wherever he was, was where the crack was. And I was like, I'm going to go find Dave just to That's be really in the crack. <laughs> Follow the photographer around the wedding. <laughs> um, one last thing that um, we were asked to ask you is about deposits. So when do we need to give you a deposit in advance of the wedding? And also, what's the crack with deposits re-COVID? So for me, I can only talk for me. Yeah. There's an awful lot of conversation around, are they refundable, are they not refundable? So this is vendor specific? Yes. So it's ask them. Not even, yeah, it's person specific. So yeah. it's, there's no rule of like, all photographers will give you back a deposit. Sure, sorry, yeah, so yeah. individual vendor yeah. specific. So I take quite a small deposit, it's 300 euro. It secures the date, you sign a contract. It's an admin fee. It covers me for like my contract software. It covers me for the emails that I send back and forth. All like, the communication and yeah, time all that, and the planning. Like, yeah. The meeting, whatever. If you have to move your wedding because of COVID, I will transfer it. Great. Within a year. I say within a year, but with everything that's going on, like I'm into, I've a couple who booked in 2017 are getting married next year and you just move wow. it. Wow. Okay. Yeah. But then that's me. Other people might be different. Uh, so that's what I'm doing. Okay. Um, no, that sounds totally reasonable. Yeah. So the, I suppose the message is. Yeah. Talk to your check. vendors. Yeah. Yeah. So it is, it was never a question I was asked before. They were just like, how much do I have to pay to secure you for the date? Mm -hmm. Now it's what happens if we have to move our wedding because of COVID. So I will move it and we'll just get on with it. It's yeah. more hassle to try and refund it, to be honest. It's of just course. Like, yeah, of course. Yeah. But if you move your wedding and don't check the dates with me, it is non-refundable because I've already spent that time. Yeah. So you say, haven't kept the year free. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and some people kind of, they don't think about that. They don't think oh, actually, I've hogged those dates on her. Like some people have come back to you and be like, we're thinking of July and June and August. And then um, you can, can you hold these three dates for us? And we're like, I mean, I can pencil it in, but if you haven't paid a deposit to secure it, like we get so many inquiries every day. You can't remember everybody. If you haven't no, I think that's totally yet. fair. So it's yeah. about you guys working together. So you're yeah. both being reasonable and a little bit flexible. Yeah, insofar generally as you can. what I say is if you have to change it, talk to your venue, get a couple of dates from your venue, then get in touch with all your vendors and be like, these are the dates. Yeah. Google Doodle, do, ugh, Google Doodle is great for that. Okay. Put all the available dates into a Google Doodle and send it to all your vendors and get them to pick which ones they can and That's can't a really do. good tip. Yeah. Okay, love that. Katie, thank you. That's been really good. Connor, a few grilling questions for you. Oh, go on. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so obviously <laughs> one of the reasons why someone would book you is because they're getting married at a, a venue and they want the, the, the ceremony to happen there or they're not going for the religious thing. So you, but you're a celebrant in that you perform the ceremony, but they'd have the legal bit somewhere else. Yeah. So can you marry people anywhere or are you restricted in the same way that maybe a HSE celebrant is or how does that work? Yeah, because if you come to myself or any of my colleagues or, you know, independent celebrants or members of the Irish Ethical Celebrant Society, because you will have lifted that legal part out of it, that then frees you up. Hot to air do, balloon, you back can garden, do it in a toilet cubicle. You can do it anywhere. Anywhere, okay, great. It. Colleagues of mine have done it in barber shops. Cool. Um, anywhere. That would be some great photographs. Would. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So, so because because there's not those legal requirements, it then frees you up then to do anything. And then on top of that then, uh, you can take into account the fact that we're not aligned to any belief system. Yeah. So if you want to have, uh, if you want to make, a thing that comes up with me often is uh, people will say, come here me, granny's devastated that we're not doing it in the church. So obviously we don't want a religious ceremony, but can you say a prayer? Can I'm you like, say a prayer? That's what we were going to ask Absolutely, yes. We can say a prayer. Okay. Uh, we can sing a hymn. We can do a Jewish blessing. We do can... you sing a hymn? <laughs> that costs like Connor, extra. Can you do a <laughs> but yes is the short answer. <laughs> um, so so we, we can bring in lots of different elements um, if you want, because we're not aligned to, to a belief system. But yes, I think, sorry to circle back to your question, uh, the idea of just lifting that legal aspect out of it frees you up then because you're not required. There would be requirements uh, if, if you want a legal solemnizer to come and solemnize your wedding. There are some, now listen, the honest thing is, they are fairly flexible in where they can and can't go. Yeah. 
right? So that is the truth. But you know, if, if you want to, like you say, if you want to do a hot air balloon, if you want to do it in your garden, yeah. you know, it just, it, when you lift the legal requirements out of it, it just frees you up then. Location days of the is, week as well. Say again? Days of the week. Isn't it the case that there's only certain days of the week with certain ones, so you can do it any time. The registry oh. office is only midweek. That's right, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, civil weddings are only midweek. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I believe that might be the case. I would stand corrected on that, but I, th I, I think so, yeah. Um, but, but people like myself, my colleagues are, my words, there'd be no limitations. That's we, great. We're just happy to be able to celebrate a ceremony with you. Because yeah. yeah. it is a very beautiful thing to be able to do, to stand at the top and witness this. Mm. So You have the front, front row seat. Exactly, yeah. It yeah. is really special. So I can only speak for myself, but, I, you know, I'll... Do whatever I can to be, yeah, absolutely. Sunday, Sunday afternoon, Sunday night, yeah, of course. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you see, and that's what this evening has been all about, about personalising your wedding and really making it yours. And you've really given us so much food for thought about how you can do that. Thank you both for your personal insights and professional ones. It's been brilliant to chat to you both. Thanks it's for having me. It's my pleasure yeah. to have been here. It was lovely to get out yeah. and, actually, <laughs> and actually put a suit on. <laughs> about that wine. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you everyone for joining us. Again, just to remind you about the competition, all you have to do is like this feed, share it, and make sure that you like um, Benetti on Facebook and tag three of your friends and you could win 1,500 euro worth of suits from Benetti. Again, all of the suits that you've seen this evening are from Benetti, of course, and you'll find details of those and the bridal wear on Benetti.ie. So make sure you join us every night during the showcase for, for lots more fun and chats. It's been brilliant. Thanks, guys. <laughs>